Okay, we're recording. Mm, there's a little bit of lag. My system is very unhappy. So, hi, if you don't already know me, my name is James. I am a student here at NC State, the biomedical department, if you couldn't guess. And what I'm doing today is I'm doing a little test build, a little preview to see whether or not, you know, something like this uh, would improve the overall quality of lecture. You can view this as like a poll, um, sort of as like a test build. There are many things still, I guess you could say not working about the current technology. Um, a lot of it needs to be done on the developer side. And I did figure out that Zoom has developer tools. So I just need to, you know, learn node.js and then I can implement better features that likely don't require you to crop windows and stuff. But for now, um, this is, this is, you know, test. This is an example of what I think could be beneficial. So, here we have, you know, just the general overall view. Um, you can create custom borders and whatnot. Uh, I should mention that all of this is currently being done in OBS. Um, and so add a, add a little bit of a flair to it. But what, what I think matters more here is probably the presentation style. So Let's go ahead and switch to that. So we can we can go ahead here and we can switch to the overall presentation display. I need to work out some kinks with this, but um, as you can see, we we change from you know our webcam view. We're not even sharing screens here, and we switch to you know custom customized uh, lecture um, tags. Etc. Etc. Um, and now, if we come over here and we let's go, let's go to the first slide. So we have this now currently, um, and what I now need to do is switch to this. Okay, so you can you can switch between your presentation view styles fairly easily. Uh, the main issue here is that all of the windows need to stay open during the time. For example, if I come over here and I and um, I minimize the PowerPoint window. Oh, so, so yeah, there you go. See, it's black now because the window is no longer active which is one of the main problems with this. Uh, the best way to circumvent this is probably having two screens. Um, there are probably settings that you can mess around with in OBS, but for now, you know, I'll, I'll say that this generally suffices for, you know, implementing um, some, some very interesting features at the very least, because, you know, we can have um, we can have text scroll over here in this location. I don't know why this is now so big. Let's do three three hundred. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. So. Um, as you can see, you can you can customize and scroll uh, text along here. We also have your general window to uh, view yourself. This this adds a little bit of personality to lectures, I think personally. Um, it'd be nice to have you know. A little bit uh, be able to see hand gestures be able to see you know what the professors are up to 
um, while viewing the PowerPoint itself. Uh, this is, you know, for the on-screen reasons here. Um, but what what I think is more interesting, and you know, what I see a lot of a lot of problems with is like, you know, what if there's what if there's a question in the chat, or there's something like on screen in the chat, and surprisingly enough, a lot of professors don't pay attention to the chat. Not until they're like, okay, let's ask questions. Um, and this could be, you know, hurtful to a student who is trying to learn because they can't process the concepts that come afterwards until their question is answered and so on and so forth. And I don't know. I just, I just really like this. I really like this setup. I think it's unique. Um, there's a couple of other things that you can uh, do specifically without, you know, needing to script right away. Um, let me go ahead and switch to this. So yeah, I know we have a lot of polls, a lot of questions that are typically asked during lecture. And so if I go ahead and switch to this and I will need to resize this again back to the original because I didn't realize that that was a thing. Yes, I'm fairly new to doing this. So we can see here um, the you have like direct access to essentially talk with your professor. This is totally completely over Zoom. And well, let me just pull up the let me pull up the chat here. Let's type hey. Check it out. Can you do commands? No. Not yet. But yeah. And so if I just type a bunch of characters into this, as you can see, it's actually updating and pushing to everyone up because I currently have a crop set on this. But as soon as I hit enter there, it'll, um, it'll move down there. But you can, you can see the capabilities with this. Like you could actually ask your students their thoughts on, you know, this, this topic, have an open discussion where people can still like chat without needing to uh, turn on their mics if they're uncomfortable. This is, this is just a lot of ways to add personality or creativity to the lectures, make them less boring or more inclusive. The, the thing with the chat or, you know, the current problem with the, the present scroll bar or the uh, um, potential of like the bottom popping up, that's, that's something that we need to be edited with developer tools and you know, Zoom does have an open API for developers to use. And so I'm sure that it really wouldn't be that difficult to have a chat log print from the API of the call. And, you know, OBS can handle um, web source chats and print display them. And it's even better because technically, uh, you can use CSS to actually edit the way it looks. So you're not stuck to this. You can add customization. And along with this, you can actually create bots as well. Something that I think would be incredibly, incredibly useful is if you had what I'm going to call like a slash, let's do, let's do a slash sill bot. And you could do slash sillbot assignments. And so this, this is a command that students can perform. And Zoom could actually tell them the assignments that are due this week. And, you know, these, these are features that are totally and completely available to other resources such as Twitch or Discord openly currently but you know not a lot of people use them some people find the interfaces to be complicated i personally do dislike discord's gui just a little bit i i really prefer telegram <laughs> 
I don't know. It's a, it's a personal preference there. Uh, there could be a learning curve for some people. So, you know, this, this would all be, you know, professor side, client side. And these, these are features that could technically be implemented by the, in, uh, by the IT department, the app or bots technically would have to be the, not, not the bots. You could probably set up your own bots in your own call, but any apps or anything outside of that would need to be set up by the department as they control the, you know, overall level for the service for the university but either way you know this is this is something here to get some thoughts uh like a chat bot that can give out general assignments i would like it personally um something that could be used to reference today's current lecture topic aside from you know what's at the top here we have custom borders for the presentation, as well as, you know, on screen viewership of the professor of um, whoever you could, uh, you know, want to see. I, I think there's a lot of custom customization ability with this and it would take just a just a little slight learning curve, but um, I'd love to know everyone's thoughts. I'll probably create a poll. So if you could create a poll, if you would do it, being given a tutorial on how to do this, then if enough people put positive support behind it, I would surely be willing to film a tutorial in my free time. But for now, there we have it. Thank you for, uh, for listening and checking this out.